Hi, I'm Kyle Cohan, the owner of Wingzone. We're proud to be associated with the Pat Dooley Show. Check us out at wingzone.com or come see us downtown on University Avenue. Hi, and welcome to the latest Pat Dooley Show, Episode 6, Rocky Balboa. We're going to talk about the Florida-Arkansas game coming up and the Florida-LSU game, of course, that was just uh, preceded us. And a uh, special guest today, Mick Hubert, Voice of the Gators, is going to join us for an interview and also to play either or. But first, let me talk about the LSU game a little bit. First of all, worst stadium ever to get into. Well, no, I can't say that. Auburn's worse. But LSU is miserable. We had a back road that we went. We still took us two hours to get there. 180,000 people were on that campus, according to a, a helicopter survey they did by the police department. And it was just packed. People were everywhere. And as you know, only half of them going to the game. But once you got inside, amazing. It's, it's a very nice press box. But the big thing was the crowd was just electric. They were excited. And for Florida to go in there in that environment and win, I think says a lot about the maturity level, the professionalism that Urban talks about this team. Offensively, Florida didn't do a whole lot, but they controlled the game. They controlled the clock. And defensively, wow, they're pretty good. I looked this up because I was curious. I'm going to write about it in Saturday's paper. The last time Florida gave up fewer points than they've given up so far this year, 1988. And that was back when they just ran it and didn't care about it. And the opposition certainly wasn't as good either. But it's been a long time since Florida has been able to hold opponents down like this. Three points to LSU. And look, Jordan Jefferson's nothing special. He isn't. Tries to throw every ball as hard as he can. He's like Byron Leftwich that way. But still, as jacked up as those guys were for Florida to hold them to three points was pretty good. And, of course, the big question about Tebow playing, uh, we got the word early in the day, a little scoop for the Gainesville Sun that he was cleared medically, and then you had a feeling he was going to play when he came out there. They weren't going to clear him medically and then sit him down. So this week, hopefully, is, been, is a normal week. So far, it has been. You think about it, the first couple of weeks you had to deal with the expectation level and all that was going on. The, the third week is the Lane Kiffin, can they beat him by 100? The fourth week is the flu. The fifth week is the concussion. The sixth week is the concussion and the LSU people getting urban cell phone and everybody else's cell phone. It was just crazy. So hopefully we'll get a little normal week, and that brings Arkansas. I don't think normal and Arkansas have ever been using the same sentence before, but they are this time. Arkansas is a good team, and I talked to uh, Urban about it being a trap game, whatever that means. Uh, what a trap game usually means is you just came off an emotional high and you're playing a team that's not that good. But this team's good, and they just handled unbeaten Auburn very easily uh, out, in, uh, out in Fayetteville. Uh, coming in here, homecoming, uh, I don't think there was any real distraction to homecoming. But it certainly is going to, should be a crowd, I would think, really jacked up. 3.30 game, it's the perfect time. You know, you guys have time to have fun, but not too much time to have fun. And you don't have to get up too early. So I think it'll be a, a big electric crowd. And uh, Florida's key in this game is to get the offense going a little bit. The next three weeks, or yeah, next three weeks, next three games of the season, Florida's facing, I think it's 12, 10, and 11 in defense in the SEC. It's time to get the offense going a little bit. But uh, there's no question the defense is right. But this is their first big test to me. You think about it. Tennessee, come on. All they could do is run. Jonathan Crompton's awful, although Georgia's secondary made him look good. Uh, when you go to Kentucky, obviously that offense with Mike Hartline and, and mediocre running game wasn't going to do anything. And then LSU could run it a little bit, but they're one-dimensional because Jordan Jefferson's not good. Now, they do have good receivers in Florida to stop them. But this team can run it. They can throw it. they got a prototype NFL quarterback in Ryan Mallett. they got good receivers. And uh, Michael Smith's an excellent tailback. So here's the big test for this defense. Let's see what they can do. All right, every week we talk about the three things I learned over the weekend. And uh, number one, Bobby Bow is not the only coach that needs to get out at FSU. Mickey Andrews, you saw that defense. It was terrible. The one good thing about the traffic is we just stayed in the press box and watched the end of that game, the last quarter of it. Amazing to me to watch Nesbitt just run quarterback keep after quarterback keeper, and they couldn't stop him. With, with the game on the line. I, I still think, I, I, I kid about Mickey Andrews, because I, th I still think he knows what he's doing. They just don't have the players. Miami, they stopped that option pretty easily. You know why? They got athletes down there. The number two thing I learned this, this weekend is that the most anticipated game of the year for the Gators isn't even on the schedule. That's because everybody's talking about Alabama. I wrote this in my column to, to, this week. Guys, let it go, okay? That's a long way off. It's not even a sure thing. Everybody's worried about how the offense will fare against Alabama's defense and can they stop Mark Ingram. And what are you talking about? They're not even on the schedule. It says SEC championship game. Don't even say you're in it. Forget it. Let it go. You got Arkansas this week. That's all that matters. And the number three thing I learned this weekend was a bad weekend for quarterbacks. When you think about Tate Forcier, Cody Hawkins, Greg Paulus all got benched. 
Uh, Juice Williams came off the bench because the guy that they benched him for was awful. And then Mike Hartline gets hurt. Not a good week to be a quarterback in college football. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with my special guest, Mick Hubert, voice of the Florida Gators. Locally owned and operated, Wing Zone features 15 award-winning flavors, plus boneless wings, chicken fingers, shrimp, and burgers. Count on Wing Zone for all of your tailgating needs. Call 352-377-2473 or order online at wingzone.com. Okay, welcome back to the Pat Dooley Show. I'm my special guest, Mick Hubert. You know him very well. Uh, obviously, uh, he's set, sitting in a seat where there's been a lot of special people. I mean, Drew Copeland sat there, James Bates, Chris Doring. Uh, Shelly Meyer didn't actually sit there, but no. she's been one of my guests. So. Well, I'm honored to be on the Pat Dooley Show. I bet you are. <laughs> hey, how long, when, did you come here in 91? No, it was uh, 1989. 89, so mm -hmm. you saw the very tail end of the bad stuff. I did. And then I, I think you got to give Mick a lot of credit. He walks in the door, what, eight SEC championships? Two foot, three football national championships, two basketball national championships. You know, a good friend of mine in Gainesville, one of the first people I met here was Tommy Waters. And uh, Tommy grew up in Gainesville. He said, Mick, you're the luckiest guy I know. He says, <laughs> we have been living here all of our <laughs> lives, seeing all this and seeing them take this away from us, take that away from us, probation here, probation there. And you come in and, yeah, within a few months, uh, yeah. you know, Steve Spurrier hired, Lon Kruger hired. And, and I didn't know if the 90s could be any better. But these last 10 years, <laughs> I guess so, huh? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's got to be, you, you've been all over the place. And you're like me. I get, I've been able to travel with them. You get to go to some really cool cities. Any, any special place you've been able to go with the football or the basketball that, uh, you know, just stood out to you? Well, you know, uh, the, the, the championship games are, mm -hmm. are, are so special. But, you know, I remember we played out in Phoenix a couple of years ago. People say, always ask me, when are you going? When are you going? When are you going? And you know, after we win the SEC championship in December 6th or 7th, I've got about 10 or 12 games to do before right. that game. So, uh, it, you know, it, I don't want to say it's just another game, but when you got 10 or 11 in front of it, it's the 12th game. So I went out and did Florida Georgia basketball game that Saturday at noon. It was the SEC opener. Caught a flight that night, got in on Sunday, did the pep rally on Sunday, did the game on Monday, flew back home. We played a game on Tuesday night. Uh, in Arkansas. Like Arkansas, that's right. So, uh, I missed you know, that. I, I, I had like a little, uh, little office shower, you know, about 4.30 <laughs> in, my after, in my office in the afternoon, went over across the street, did Billy Donovan, a pregame show. So I did three games in four days, including the national championship in Phoenix. So, you know, uh, the travel's n not that great. No, I mean, no. and yet I, I travel with the team, charters. It, it, is, it is good, but it does get old after a while. The games are special, and certainly the game we had recently at LSU. Right. That's, that's my favorite venue in football road games, always has been. Yeah. Even when they're yeah. not so good, yeah. I still I still like it. In fact, 93 was probably my best game there in terms of uh, we beat them 58 to three and emptied right. the stadium by halftime. I love that. It's kind of like Athens <laughs> in 95, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, it, but it's so hard to get in and out of that place. I mean, it is brutal. You, I saw the team charter. It looks like they were stuck for a while. Oh, uh, in LSU? Yeah. It, it is ridiculous. It really is. And, uh, you know, now Athens is not that hard, no, excuse me, it's hard to get yeah. out of too. We've fortunately, the worst we've thing, only yeah. been there once. Auburn's yeah. brutal. Yeah, yeah. There's one road. One and road. It's not even paved. Yeah. I'm telling you. No, I'm kidding. But but you know, <laughs> hey, we get paid to, to go watch ball games. It's not a bad way to live. That's what people tell me. You know, <laughs> you got to pretty much. But they aren't writing on columns on deadline either. That's the great thing oh. for you. When that game's over, boom, you're out of there. It's exactly right. Now we do a little bit of a post game show under an hour uh, or so, and then I do TV games. It, that li literally is the way. I, when I, when I do a women's basketball game on TV, yeah. I try. I don't, I, I don't usually get this done, but I try and sometimes get home before Steve Babbick finishes his post-game radio show <laughs> because when TV, you can do that. Yeah, and yeah. I know you guys have got a lot of work to do when that horn sounds. Well, I'm curious, and we're going to give away trade secrets here. When do you film the Urban Meyer show? We do that about 7.30, quarter to 8 on Sunday morning. Sunday morning? Yeah, okay. and that's it's always been the way it is. And So when you see it at noon, we look half asleep. It's because we, we are in some instances, like last week. Well, I, I've seen some of these coaches, like I think Larry Blakeney did his on the field after the game. Uh, other coaches would they want to do it right as soon as they're they're done? Um, has, has that gone from coach to coach, or has Spurrier, Zook, Mer Meyer been all the same? Well, you know, when I, when I got here in '89, the format was that we actually did Galen Hall on the field after the game, and so that first year we did that, and I'd go over to TV 20 and voice over the highlights, and I remember the LSU game. Arden Krzyzewski kicks right. a field goal to win at 16-13. I come out about a quarter to seven in the morning after voicing over the highlights, go home, sleep, wake up one o'clock, turn on the NFL, and see a crawl at the bottom of the screen. Galen Hall's been fired oh, at Florida. <laughs> and I thought, wow. 
And then, of course, a couple weeks later, you know, Norm Sloan fired. But yeah. that was the first year. The next year when Spira got here, we took our show to the studio. I much prefer being in the studio, and we've been in the studio ever since for all of our shows. Now, obviously, you've done a lot of baseball as well, and, uh, and I know those can be a little tedious at times. You get rain delays. You know, rain delays in football or basketball. But, I mean, is there one sport you really like doing more than any other? Pat, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I love football in the football season, but I love basketball in the basketball mm -hmm. season, and, and I love baseball when it's baseball time. I, I don't live, eat, and breathe any one particular sport. Uh, basketball, I, I do like a lot because of what you said. There's five guys. I can see their face. Yeah. I can <laughs> hear the game. It's going to be two hours. There's going to be no delays. That's good. Baseball, there could be delays, yeah. and it could be three and a half hours for nine innings. Uh, you know, football, you, you ride the wave of emotions. Uh, the, the LSU game was over in three hours because they ran the ball. The Arkansas game might go four hours because yeah. they throw the ball. So you just never know. I, I, I like to prepare for the game, what I really like. I like the Monday through Friday getting ready because mm -hmm. then on Saturday, I can just sit back and, and really be a fan and enjoy the game. When you were growing up, who was the, who was the guys that influenced you the most? I know one that did. And it had to be the oh my man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it sure was. I, I had I went to school at Illinois State, grew up near Chicago, and a buddy of mine that was really my mentor, he's about five years older than me, moved early in his career to the West Coast, and he would send me back Dick Enberg tapes. Mm -hmm. When Dick Enberg was kind of a, he was a national guy, but he was still doing the Rams on KMPC in Los Angeles, and uh, he would send me back these tapes, the LA Rams, and I'd listen to Dick Enberg, and and I, I have always been doing that, Pat, since I was about seven, eight years old, listening to radio guys, and and seeing how I could use bits and pieces and that's all we do we, we steal from everybody but sure. there, there are certain things that some people use I think you know it's great for you but it's not me I, I would be stupid if I said it but the oh my I thought worked and I started using it in, in Peoria back in the 70s took it to Ohio in the 80s here to Florida in the 90s and beyond and uh, I remember a few years ago, Steve Spurrier was out there in one of those celebrity golf things out there in Reno, I think. Lake and, Tahoe, yeah. Yeah, Lake yeah. Tahoe. And, and Inberg is there, and Steve says to him, he says, hey, he says, you know our guy back there in Gainesville, he, he, he takes the old my, and he says he got it from you. And I had not met Dick Inberg at that time. I've since met him, wonderful, wonderful man. But he said to Spurrier, he said, well, you tell, you tell your guy back there that uh, I stole it from a guy in the 1940s, <laughs> so I was okay. You know, I've since met He's Enberg. passing it along. Yeah, Enberg was certainly one of them. Uh, Jim Durham, who sometimes appears on ESPN today, right. but was the Chicago Bulls radio announcer for about sure. 18 years. Best radio play call I've ever heard in basketball. And, of course, uh, Jack Brickhouse and Harry Carey were my baseball guys. And, uh, you know, you, you just, I, and even to this day, I, I watch games sometimes just to listen to the announcers. I know nobody else does that, but I, I, I well, do Well, people that. watch the, for Harry. Because everybody loved Harry, especially when he was pounded Budweiser's in the... Well, and they, yeah, they much, and, and, hey! and, when, <laughs> and when I was doing a TV news back in Peoria, I would get home at 10.30 after our newscast and turn on TBS, which was WTCG, and I'd get the replay of the games with uh, Skip oh, yeah, Carey. Yeah. And they would play them on into the early morning hours, and Bull Tush would come along and do his movie with his film and all that stuff and all the jokes. And, and so I, I really became a Skip Carey fan because uh, he also did the St. Louis Hawks there for a while. So, do you uh, remember the days when the Braves used actually be on television? I do. They are not yes. anymore. It drives me nuts. It, not anymore, but back in the day, that's when Messersmith would wear number 17, then they change oh, his yes. name, put Channel on the top. <laughs> Channel 17, and the baseball made him stop doing that. That's right, that's right. Those are the good old days. <laughs> yeah. I remember Andy Messersmith, I interviewed him once because he was kind of the guy that started free agency. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, that's he right. Did. Yeah. All right, well, last question for you, Mick, and we're going to get you back to do either or in a minute. But you've dealt with a lot of personalities over there. Different. Sp Spurrier, Urban, Zook, come on. You can't get much more different than them. Billy, Lon, totally different. I mean, what is that like for you to adjust? Because you've got to do pre-games with them. You've got to talk to them. Some of them are, you know, Urban for a long time, hard to get close to for a lot of people. I mean, what's that been like for you? Been great, great training. It really has. I remember uh, maybe the first or second game that Steve Spurrier did here. I, I do a radio show with him on Friday morning about 10.30. That's our pregame show. That's when right. we taped it. And I went in. I must have had 12 or 14 questions on a note card. And uh, I, I did the first one, and Steve kept going, and, and I, I do like the second one, and I realized the next one would be like number seven, because he's already given the answers to two, three, four, and five. So <laughs> if I ask question three, it's going to look really stupid, because yeah. he already talked about it. At that point, I realized, Spurrier, throw the note card away. It'll just be a nice conversation. Yeah. Maybe you already asked that question. Easy to, ask it again. easy to work with. And every time we do a TV show, he'd always say, oh, well, Mick, this is like our 137th show, isn't it? Oh, I said, oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. He had, a, he, oh, had yeah. he had them all down, and, and he was great to work with. Lon was going to be short answers, and you had to have a lot of questions. 
And I remember one time Obviously. on Gator Hotline, we were having a storm, and Lon said, well, maybe the phones will get knocked off. We won't be able to do it. I said, Lon, if the phones get knocked out, we're still going to be here for an hour. Yeah. We're not going home. It's going to be them calling you or else me and you. And then that, that, that sparked a, a Spurrier quote some years later on TV. We were doing Gator Hotline or back on TV in those days. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah it was kind of fun. But Steve looked at me one time and says, Mick, he said, we're just trying to fill an hour the best way we can, aren't we? I said, that's right, Coach. We come in at 7, we go home at 8, and whatever's in the middle, that's what happens. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get Mick back for a segment of Either War in just a bit. But for right now, we've got to go and see what's on the latest list. Wing Zone was started in Gainesville and has over 70 locations across the country. Our Wing Zone has been recognized by the Wing Zone Corporation in 2007 as Franchise of the Year. Call 352 331 6011 or visit us online at wingzone.com. All right, it's time for my weekly list. This week's list, is, say that three times real fast. This week's list is going to be my five favorite homecoming games. And number five, New Mexico, 1989. And a lot of you out there going, New Mexico? What are you talking about? Well, that was the day that Emma Smith ran 31 times for 316 yards. Still a record. Yeah, Florida was awful. And they gave it to him almost every play. But he kept breaking big runs. And it, one of those memorable games, I can see one of his long runs if I close my eyes. But I won't because we're doing a TV show. Number four, Vanderbilt, 2005. Remember that game? Double overtime. And Vandy might have won that game. But they uh, threw a flag celebration penalty, our favorite subject, on Earl Bennett after he caught a touchdown pass. And all he did was go like this, and they didn't go for two. They were going to go for two, so they kicked the extra point. And in the end, Florida was able to pull out the win. But that was a huge win for, for Urban Meyer when you think about it. You come in your first year, you lose to Vandy? Oh, the natives would have been restless. Number three, LSU 1996. So this is a 56-13 Florida win. Why is it one of my favorite? Because I've never seen anything like it. Florida was so dominant in the first half that by the middle of the first quarter, the LSU defensive backs had their hands on their hips trying to get their breath. They just threw all over them. And I remember Spurrier telling me, Steve Spurrier, telling me that LSU in the second half went to a prevent defense just to keep the score down as much as possible. 56-13, it's hard to believe that Florida could beat LSU. You know, again, we're only talking about 13 years ago that badly. Number two, also an LSU game, 2006. I know you guys remember that game. Of course, that was where Jamarcus Russell fumbled down the goal line. Florida recovered. Big, big game as part of that gauntlet that Florida faced in 2006. One of the biggest hits I've ever seen that uh, Reggie Nelson put on Brandon LaFell as well. And just a tremendous football game. Electric atmosphere. And I think everybody had a good time then. Number one, you ready? Auburn, 1966. Yeah, it was homecoming when Steve Spurrier kicked the field goal that won him the Heisman Trophy. I was there at that game. I'll never forget Gusty Year out taking that fumble out of midair and running for a touchdown the other way, like 90 yards, 93, I think it was. And Spurrier yelling uh, to, to Richard Trapp, go get him, Dickie. Uh, but he didn't get him, so he scored a touchdown. But what a dramatic – everybody was there, of course. You know, there's like 500,000 people that were at the game. I'm, I'm telling you, I was there. So that's my favorite homecoming game. All right, next up, we're going to talk, do a little either or with Mick Hubert. He's going to rejoin us here on the Pat Dooley Show, episode six. Check out the Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone. Remember, when it comes to your next football party, Wing Zone has you covered. Now offering convenient delivery. Call 352 377 2473 or go online to wingzone.com to order today. All right, now it's time to play either or here on the Pat Dooley Show. And you, I know you love our fancy graphic back here. Pretty impressive, huh? Uh, well, we're going to talk to Mick Hubert. And I, I swear we did not coordinate this. I would wear blue and you, <laughs> he would wear orange because I'm an unbiased journalist, as you know. All right, either or. Mick, which was more exciting to witness, Florida's first football or first basketball national championship? Wow, boy, they're all great, but yeah. uh, I, I got to think the football one certainly was. I mean, to do it in New Orleans and, and to beat Florida State 52 to 20 and to blow them out like that, that, that was really special. And to know what it meant for so many Gator right. fans. Uh, you know, I go back to even to, to, to 91 when the SEC championship, people are saying, hey, there are a lot of people that lived their whole life and never saw that. And so sure. who knew what would happen between 91 and 96 to get to, <laughs> to get to that point? So that was special. But certainly that 04 group to win back-to-back -back titles in basketball, that's tremendous. To, uh, it's hard to, hard to really rank them. You know, it would be hard for me. I haven't ranked that yet. Maybe that will be the list next week. But uh, what I remember about 06 basketball more than anything is you're covering it, you're covering it, you're covering it, you're covering it. And then all of a sudden there was that moment where you went, holy cow, they're going to win the national title. And it really, for me, didn't happen until about two minutes left in the game. And I went, this is actually happening. It was a real, 
you, you know, you think of oh, UCLA will figure out a yeah. way to beat them. Yeah. Well, that's that, that's you're right because in football you beat Florida State, and then in basketball you beat UCLA. I, I mean, you know, you're not beating you know, little sisters of the poor here. Exactly. I mean, you're beating programs that have been great, and so they're, they're very special. And then you come back, of course, with the uh, the Quinella of Ohio State, Ohio State, which yeah. wasn't bad either. All right, who is easier to travel with, Lee McGriff or Mark Wise? <laughs> I sold you nothing but easy questions. <laughs> well, uh, uh, these are both friends of mine, yeah, so I can ask it. And both good friends of mine. Uh, football is in and out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Lee's pretty quiet, and uh, you don't you don't really you you just you blow in Friday night, you go to dinner, and you wake up, you play on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Basketball is a lot of travel. As we talked about those national right. championship games, I mean, uh, the, the runs you're week after week right after out, week. Yeah. You're on the road. You're on the road. You're on the road. Uh, Mark loves basketball. He's great to travel with. We get in some great conversations because we have more time. So that's what's special. I, I don't get tired of, of either one of those guys right. or either one of those sports because you got to get in a little different mode to do them. Yeah, two of the really good guys. Yeah. I, I really yeah. like both those guys a lot. I would guess at least probably a little easier to travel with if it was me because, you know, Mark's always digging. <laughs> He's always digging. Always got a smart remark. He's for working you. it. Yeah. All right, which is number three, which is a tougher gig? Broadcasting baseball in Miami. Or basketball at Vanderbilt. And I hit the two worst, didn't I? Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, I'm waiting for the day that they'll have something nice down there in Miami. Yeah. But if I never don't wait too long. But if I never see it, that'll be fine. Yeah. The next announcer can enjoy it, you know, because broadcasting baseball down there is not a lot of fun. I, I really don't do a lot of it in February because of basketball. Right. But I got to go down there a lot. You know, in the summer and for the, the regionals, regionals yeah. and it's going to rain. It's going to be 105 degrees. You're sitting out in the stands. Oh, for those it, of you it, don't know, you're literally sitting out in the brutal. stands, and you can hear if you listen to the, the RUF broadcast. The Miami uh, student yeah. pay, uh, student radio yeah. guys right next to you. You can hear it over the RUF microphone. It's too. tight, and then the guy can, right in front of you turns around and asks you a question, <laughs> batting average or something, or tells tells you what he thinks of you. Vanderbilt, when I first started there, Pat, we were way high, right. and I couldn't hear anything. That's what I love about basketball. You know, I can hear the ball, in, 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 you know, dribble, and the ball go through the net, and the tennis shoes squeaking, and the whistles blowing. At Vandy, the game was like a rumor. I mean, it was down there, and you really couldn't hear it. A rumor, yeah. yeah. And then, now where we are, we're on the other side of the court, and below, and now I see nothing but ankles. <laughs> so you're looking like this. It, it's, it's harder to call, so you don't have any depth of the three-point line, especially right. at the other end. But, you know, the... It's, it's still getting bad, paid. To not get a bad there, gig yeah. after all. <laughs> Who's got the nicest ankles that you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> all right, last question on either or. Which Pat Dooley book did you find more interesting? Game of My Life or Yesterday and Today? Which one, which one was I? You were in the last okay. one, Yesterday and Today. Love that book. Whole <laughs> chapter on him. He was, he's like, you wrote a book? <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you that Game of My Life is a better book. But Yesterday and Today is pretty good, too. At least by my standards. Love it. What do I know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for either or. Mick, thanks so much for coming in. Pat, we thank appreciate you. it. Thank you're, you. You're now a TV star, officially. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's in Dr. Football's email bag next. Yeah, and the guy who emailed me and said that he didn't like that, that sweaty, hairy, meaty hand handing me the thing every week, I agree with you. We, sh we need to get somebody much more attractive to do it. And you need a manicure, Pods. In Baton Rouge, was the offense limited due to Tebow, or did Urban Meyer know if we meet LSU again in Atlanta, we wouldn't reveal our hand? This comes from Gator Sam. Gator Sam, are you out of your mind? They were trying to win the game. They had no, there was, now, was it limited because of Tebow? Yeah, I think a little bit, but certainly you wouldn't hold back anything in a game like that because you might face somebody down the road. I don't think Florida fans are worried too much about placing LSU again. Uh, I think LSU's got another loss in it for one thing, and I think a lot of people think it'll be Alabama if they both go. But remember, I cautioned you earlier, they're not on the schedule yet. The bottom line is Florida limited their offense and what they did because their defense is really good. And they knew they could count on that defense to hold LSU and keep them from scoring. And, and you know, I, I, I talked about this before. I think I actually talked about it on this show last week. I said the defense is going to go out there with an attitude of, I don't care who's playing quarterback, just give us uh, 10 points and we'll be fine. And that's exactly what they did. All right, we'll be back next week with a new episode. I appreciate all of you for clicking on. Until next time, Pat Dooley, sports columnist of the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from the Sunshine State.